Right guys, uh, we're back for another video and in this video we're going to be talking about keto. Ketogenesis. What is ketogenesis? Okay. Um, you may have come across some articles over the internet recently where you will be seeing more and more top athletes talking about the ketogenic diet. Okay. Um, so in this video, without going into too much detail and making this too scientific and too you know heavy on the, the brain, um, I'm going to try and explain it as simply as I can. Okay. Um, keto. Imagine a motor car, right? From what we know from the past, right? We used to have petrol. Obviously, then came diesel. And in petrol, most of the, the petroleum fuel cars, we used to put in petrol which had lead in it, okay? Um, so basically what we've got to see is that since years past, what they've done is they've removed components such as lead out of our fuel, okay? Now why did they do that? Because lead created a harmful byproduct okay and that is both toxic and harmful to both us and the environment okay so that was the dirty part within the fuel okay so they started to make fuel cleaner and by removing certain of these pollutants and these toxic waste byproducts effectively what they were doing is they were giving us a cleaner fuel source from which to run our vehicles and in doing that what transpired was well we realized that these vehicles not only were able to travel further distances um, but the wear and tear on the component parts within the engine became less okay and in essence that is really the same thing as what keto affords us. Okay. Um, if you were anything like me, you would, have, you may have thought that there was only one way our bodies can fuel themselves. Okay. Again, if we go back to school days, we were taught about glycogen and the glycolysis process, and basically what that is is through what we eat and through the air that we breathe our bodies then create energy okay through our digestion process and basically what we do is we break down traditionally carbohydrates okay break those down into glycogen which gets stored in the liver as a fuel as an energy source okay um, however if I were to tell you, the body, being the amazing receptile that it is, can actually function on another energy source, not only carbohydrates, okay? And that alternative energy source is fat, okay? Now the body prefers synthesizing its energy through fat than it does through carbohydrates. Now why is this? Okay, well remember my analogy I made of dirty fuel and clean fuel and that lead was the dirty component, okay, and that we want to remove that? Well, in much the same way, when we rely on energy reserves through carbohydrate synthesis, okay our bodies together with the air that we breathe and the carbohydrates that we put into our bodies okay the two of those go through cells in our bodies called mitochondria those mitochondria through the digestion process create energy okay however the problem with carbohydrates is in order to break those carbohydrates down, okay, what happens is the body produces free radicals. And you've heard how bad free radicals are, okay? Um, 
these are the things which affect our bodies and can make our bodies cancerous. So we have to get rid of free radicals out of, the, out of our bodies in order to protect ourselves and to protect them from being damaged. Okay? And so, as I mentioned to you, there's another way that our bodies can function, and that is to say, we're not going to use carbohydrates at all. Okay? What we're rather going to do is we're going to use the body's own fat reserves for energy, okay? But it can't be done in the presence of carbohydrate intake. And when I say it can't, it can, but generally all the major carbohydrates that we eat, like the starches, you know, the potatoes, the rice, the pasta, uh, all those starchy, products that we were eating, those are the complex carbohydrates that we cannot eat at all guys, not even bread, okay, um, because it is those products that we put into our bodies which require a lot of oxidation, and so you can see oxidation as rust, okay, like lead is the bad byproduct in that fuel, through the process of oxidation, free radicals being formed is the rust in our bodies. And I mean, rust is rust. We know that we want to get rid of rust at all costs, right? So why put your body through all its life? Why make your body um, work off carbohydrate synthesis, which naturally creates a byproduct of rust in our bodies when we can eliminate that completely and we can say I would rather use my own fat which then leaves no byproduct okay free radicals maybe in minute form but greatly far lessened through the synthesis of fat the other thing which makes a lot of sense is well, it's burning your own fat, okay? We all like to overindulge and we all put on a bit of weight, okay? Why not have the peace of mind that the, your lifestyle and the way that you're eating is allowing your body to naturally burn the unwanted fat we keep in our bodies, okay? It makes common sense. Something else I'll tell you is that the brain far prefers that energy through the synthesis of fat than it does through the synthesis of carbohydrates. Okay, so effectively, as I said, you know, we can go into a lot of detail and you guys may get bored, so I'm trying to avoid that. But the main thing is that, it's exactly that, we are opting to fuel our bodies through a cleaner, energy burning cycle or process than we possibly have been okay but there are two potentially major drawbacks for you the number one is well i hope you've been cutting out sugar for a long time already because sugar is your route your guaranteed route to cancer Sugar is the thing that disturbs and attacks the cells of the body more than anything else. Okay, so sugar is completely out in this lifestyle. And number two, all complex carbohydrates are out. We still take in carbohydrates, but we only take in 5% of our total consumption of calories through simple carbohydrates and for the, this illustration we're going to say just imagine those simple carbohydrates coming from green leafy vegetables okay keeping things simple here guys I don't want to overcomplicate the process for you so effectively what we're doing is we're looking for an ideal 
And that ideal is going to be this. We need to put in on a daily basis 70% of our cal calorie intake needs to be derived from fats. 25% of our calorie intake thereafter must be derived from protein. And only 5%, guys, is going to be carbohydrates. Okay. Now, what is that going to do? And what does that do to our bodies? Okay, well, the first step is obviously <clears throat> we need to get into ketosis. Okay. And um, I can see here on my video that I'm already going on to 10 minutes. So, again, I want to make these things manageable, guys. I don't want to give you too much information at once. You know, you might be sick and tired of this video. And if I go on for another 10 minutes, well, what's the chance of you coming back to go halfway through the video? Probably not very good, right? So I'm going to end it here. I've given you a brief understanding of what ketogenesis is. Okay. In a nutshell, to recap, we're going to be fueling our bodies through fat synthesis as opposed to fueling our bodies through carbohydrate synthesis. Okay, cleaner burning, better longevity. Overall, you'll see there is no comparison, okay, as to why you would choose to go the carbohydrate route, okay. Baby steps, one step at a time. That's a brief introdu introduction into ketogenesis, okay. And then I'm going to follow up with a following video, which will go into a little more detail. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you benefited. I hope you, you learned something today, at least. And uh, follow me on the next video. And uh, we'll see if keto or ketogenesis is indeed something that you're interested in. And that uh, you believe is something you should uh, subscribe to. I'll chat you in a few minutes. Thanks guys, thanks for watching.